Welcome to the special COVID-19 edition of ERA Senior Network Stop Senior Frauds and Scams presentation. This presentation is made possible through a grant from the Wisconsin Consumer Anti-Fraud Fund at the Greater Milwaukee Foundation. My name is Pat Knuth and I am a volunteer for ERA Senior Networks and have been presenting many of our Stop Senior Frauds and Scams presentations since 2016. Your Senior Networks is a nonprofit organization serving seniors and adults with disabilities living in Waukesha and Milwaukee counties. Our mission is to engage and support seniors, adults with disabilities, and family caregivers in leading meaningful lives. Our supportive services include transportation to medical appointments and grocery shopping, seasonal yard cleanup, and wellness calls. Ears also help seniors engage in community through meaningful volunteer activities. Since 2016, our organization has been sharing our Stop Senior Frauds and Scams presentation to the community and now is presented to over 1,700 seniors and their caregivers. Unfortunately, scam artists will look for any new opportunity to take advantage of others and oftentimes use fear in their tactics. In the short months that coronavirus has impacted the United States, a number of new scams related to the virus have been reported. Our short presentation will provide tips to consider when facing with a possible scam, examples of current COVID-19 scams, and information on Wisconsin new elder abuse hotline, an important tool for seniors and their caregivers. Here is created the acronym STOP, which contains tips for seniors and caregivers to consider when presented with a potential fraud or scam. As the old saying goes, if it sounds too good to be true, it likely is too good to be true. Time pressure is the T. No one should be forced you to make snap decisions not on the phone, not by email, not by snail mail. The O and stop is for organize. It means that we need to be in and remember that we are in control and not the scam artist. We can be in control by asking questions, talking to people we trust, taking the time to think and organize our thoughts and trusting our gut past experience can make help make a smart decision. COVID-19 scams are getting very prevalent. The Federal Trade Commission reported that more than 91,800 COVID-19 scams had been reported by June 8, 2020, nearly two months ago. Victims have reported losing $59.2 million due to COVID scams up to that date. The Better Business Bureau has received numerous reports of people receiving messages and email claims that they can purchase a cure for COVID-19. Scam artists trying to sell cures to the coronavirus may tell you that they have access to a product that the government is keeping secret, which they can sell you for a high price. Advertisements for this cure may also include false testimonials. COVID-19 cures do not exist at this time, nor does a vaccine. As much as we want a cure for the coronavirus, currently there is no cure. Anyone claiming to have a cure is providing false information. This, there are ways to prevent this scam. Delete emails advertising a COVID-19 cure. Screen your calls and hang up on callers advertising a COVID-19 cure. And discuss questions regarding treatments with your doctor. COVID-19 tests are becoming more available, but it is important to be aware of testing sites, fake testing sites. This is a story, a self-proclaimed medical marketing company set up makeshift testing sites in Kentucky, dressed in hazmat gear. They were charging $240 per fake COVID test. 
in example shared, scam artists were not actually providing you with accurate COVID-19 test results. Additionally, the scam artists were not practicing proper hygiene and were using the same gloves between several people. Your DNA and personal information is now in the hands of those scam artists if you went to such a test site. Discuss a reputable test site with your doctor and ask for a referral. Research local testing sites through your State Department of Health Services. Because contract tracing is so important in understanding who may be exposed to the virus, scam artists use this as an opportunity to steal personal information. Contact tracers are hired by the State's Department of Public Health and work with an affected person to get the names and phone numbers of everyone they came in close contact with. Contract tracers will then reach out to those people to inform them of possible exposure. Legitimate contact tracers will likely start the communication by sending you a text message informing you that you will be receiving a call. When you receive a call from a legitimate contact tracer, they will never ask you for your personal information or for payment. You may be offered an opportunity to receive daily text messages which send daily health and safety reminders until the 14-day quarantine ends, legitimate contract tracers will never text you a link to click. If you receive a link, it's a scam and it may be used to steal your personal information. How to report COVID-19 scams. Call your local non-emergency police department number. You can find that through the internet. File a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission at ftc.gov slash complaint. Copy the message and forward it to 7726, which is a SAM reporting site. Report it to the Wisconsin Elder Abuse Hotline at 1-833-586-0100. As mentioned in our list of ways to report a scam, the new Wisconsin Elder Abuse Hotline provides an easier method for people living in Wisconsin to report elder abuse. To share more information about the hotline, our Mike Austin, Policy Director for the Wisconsin Department of Justice, and Joanna Renstein, Elder Abuse Hotline Coordinator for the Greater Wisconsin Agency on Aging Resources. Hi, I'm Heather Uzuwulu, Development Director at ERA Senior Network. I have the privilege of being joined by Mike Austin and Joanna Reinstein to talk more about elder abuse in Wisconsin. Mike Austin is the Abuse in Later Life Program Manager for the Wisconsin Department of Justice, and Joanna Reinstein is the Elder Abuse Hotline Coordinator of GWAR, Greater Wisconsin Agency on Aging Resources. Mike. Can you talk about the magnitude of elder abuse in the world and also here in Wisconsin? So elder abuse, um, it's not something that people always hear a lot about um, uh, necessarily in their, in their communities, but it's really a, a large and rapidly growing problem, not just here in Wisconsin, but all over, all over the, the world. So it's not something that's unique here to Wisconsin or the United States. It's a, it's a problem uh, across, across the entire world. And so, really to kind of put it in perspective, uh, there's been a lot of research done behind this, and uh, research has said that there's uh, one in 10 older adults that have experienced some form of abuse. And so it's really, you know, as a result, it's really underreporting. And so there's other studies that have found that for every one case that is found, uh, there's almost 24 others that are, that are unreported. So it's really a problem out there in the, in the community, and it's, really under the under the radar and so even it gets even worse you know in terms of financial abuse cases uh for everyone that's found there's another 44 that are out there and you know financial abuse is really uh, growing these cases they look a little bit different than uh normal you know if i talk to people out um you know your, your average citizens they usually say that they think elder abuse is happening with uh with facilities or primarily just, you know, scam artists that are out there. And certainly those are happening and they're very serious ones that are out there. 
and that's part of the problem. But really, the, the largest um, amount of abuse is happening by perpetrators that are close to those older adults. And it's more likely to be adult children or spouses, uh, primarily, usually more trends to being a male perpetrator. Um, and typically, they have uh, problems in their past, like substance abuse, uh, mental health problems or physical health problems that's uh, keeping them with that that older adults and it keeps them with them you know socially isolated with them. On May 11, 2020, Attorney General Josh Call and Guar announced the launch of a new elder abuse hotline in Wisconsin. Mike, can you talk about the benefits the Wisconsin Department of Justice feels the elder abuse hotline will have on seniors in Wisconsin? Yeah, really. I mean, we, we set this uh, hotline up because there's uh, kind of those underreported cases that are out there. And, uh, you know, for an average citizen to navigate themselves, uh, how to reach their uh, local adult protective services or other resources within their community is often, you know, confusing for your average citizen, much less your victim who might be under a lot of trauma and confusion with, you know, being uh, the perpetrator who's, who's close to them. So we wanted to create a resource. Uh, kind of a one-stop shop for people to be able to go, uh, you know, get advice, get guidance, but then ultimately get, you know, referred to those uh, local, local resources. Joanna, as someone who speaks to seniors who are calling the Wisconsin Elder Abuse Hotline, what can a senior expect when they make that call? A person can expect to receive assistance reaching the appropriate county agency or in order to make that elder abuse referral or to receive information in regards to other community resources. So when an individual calls into the hotline to report elder abuse, the caller will need to provide information to myself in order um, regards to the alleged abuse that's going on with the elder. Um, those types of abuse might be physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, financial exploitation, neglect or self-neglect. So from that point, I will gather information on the caller's um, name and phone number if they do not, if they, unless they wish to remain anonymous. Then I will gather information on the elder as far as their name, date of birth, the county they live in, um, their type of living arrangement, and what type of abuse um, the allegation is related to. Once all of that information is collected, I will make a call to the local APS um, agency in which the county, in the county in which the elder resides in along with the referral source on the line as well. And then after reaching the appropriate contact at that APS agency, um, the county, a warm transfer is completed in order for that uh, alleged abuse, or the referral source to make um, the elder abuse referral. So, you know, we understand that the Wisconsin Elder Abuse Hotline addresses all forms of elder abuse and not just scams. Um, what are some reasons that a senior caregiver or senior advocate might call the hotline? A person might also benefit from calling the hotline in order to obtain additional resources they might not be aware of in their communities. In some cases, it might not be appropriate to make an APS referral. So the hotline can also provide resources or referrals to other programs such as the Elder Rights Program or Project, domestic violence or sexual assault agencies, the Guardianship Support Centers, or the Board on Aging and Long-Term Care. Wonderful, thank you. Joanna and Mike. Understanding that there are many types of elder abuse, have you found a certain type of abuse to be more prevalent during the COVID-19 pandemic? And what should seniors, caregivers, and senior advocates be on the lookout for during this time? I would say since COVID-19, many more family members are concerned about their elders that are receiving care within a residential facility, since those facilities are not allowing visitors. So there definitely have been more calls and concerns related to neglect within those facilities due to these restrictions. Yeah, I guess I, I would add, uh, Heather, on that, that you know, scams obviously are, are for sure on the rise uh, whenever these types of uh, pandemics or large issues come up. Scam artists really come out of the, the woodwork to try to target vulnerable uh, adults and older adults especially. So. Um, really, uh, caretakers or older adults, they need to be really cognizant of what, uh, what kind of phone calls they're getting at, you know, at, at home or emails that really kind of be skeptical of all those things. Government isn't going to, you know, reach out to you 
um, for, for certain things, including, hey, you know, if you give us your stimulus check or if you do this, you're going to get something else out of it. Um, you know, kind of uh, uh, verify with other people and talk with other people, especially those that are uh, really educated on these these scams. And really, certainly, a hotline could be a resource to talk to them about what's what maybe kind of information you're receiving. Um, the other things that are really kind of happening, you know, with COVID is there's a lot of social isolation going on. So that just really doesn't help for you know older adults to be able to interact with those uh, trusted people, uh, you know, whether they're family members or friends that be able to verify whether it's a scam or whether it's, you know, other uh, forms of abuse that are going on within, within their home or by their caregiver. Um, that, that they haven't been able to, to uncover. Um, so that isolation is a problem on a normal day and, you know, it's even worse right now when you're not in COVID. So really the advice I would provide is check in with those older adults, you know, uh, call them, you know, see how their day is going, how their week's going, if you can do video chats, uh, and then obviously look to, to our, our, our website, um, to, you know, kind of look for those common red flags at, at www. Uh, report elder abuse wi.org lots of good tips about you know what elder abuse looks like uh, within the in the community and you can you know, learn more there thank you to close how can a person connect with the hotline yes the number for the hotline is 1-833-586-0107 wonderful thank you Thank you very much, Mike and Joanna, for taking time to share important information about Wisconsin's Elder Abuse Hotline. Thank you for tuning into our special COVID-19 Stop Senior Frauds and Scams. We invite you to share this information with seniors and caregivers in your life and hope you will stay safe during this time.